Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Wednesday, August 2nd, 2017. Uh, let's take a quick look at the cues. Uh, the, the market as a whole, we'll take a look at here, but I'll do a quick video. Uh, it's, you know, it still appears to me this market is just running on fumes. Uh, looks like it's almost out of gas here. Uh, we've, you know, put up a recent highs. I know the, um, I'm sure the mainstream media has cheered the uh, recent new highs. I saw something about the Dow making a new high. But again, you know, I've talked about that, that, um, you know, even back here, if, it, if we made a new high, which we did recently, it'd be a divergent high. Um, I'm doing this video because there's quite a bit of, you know, significant technical developments worth mentioning right now. First of all, you know, it's, it's, it's all about the cues. Uh, the technology has, has by far uh, lifted this market. It's been the leading sector. So uh, although there, you know, we've seen quite a bit of sector rotation, I still believe it's safe to say that when tech breaks, uh, the market breaks. And tech now is such a, a large component, even of the S&P 500. Um, where is it? Let me see. XLK is XLK. It's 20. It's it's a quarter of the S&P 500. And as you guys know, it's it's well over half. Uh, well over half of the NASDAQ 100. So uh, there it is. Here's here's the charts. Let's just go over the developments real quick and I'll we'll wrap this up. All right. So there's the, uh, we had a divergent high right here and we did get a little correction. And then we had an extension, what I call, a cons you know, two consecutive divergent highs. So that's really one large uh, with the divergence steepening here. Now, the significant technical developments, you know, mentioned divergent highs in themselves. Uh, you know, they can go higher, they can be negated, but right now we have confirmed divergence. You can see the PPO uh, making a bearish crossover as of today. Those lines have now crossed. If we finish the day down, you know, if we don't have a big stick save, uh, meaning a reversal into the close, then uh, we'll have that co confirmed negative divergence. And that's a pretty pretty good, uh, you know, almost a sell signal in itself. And let's just look at some of the recent price action. Well, let's look at today. Uh, if you guys are at work or getting home while you're watching this video, today we had a big pop-up. This was the Apple-induced gap. You know, Apple came in, uh, had a blowout um, quarter. Uh, the stock was up, I don't know, over 5% or so at one time, and that lifted the queues. However, even though Apple's still tra trading higher, uh, there was a tremendous amount of profit taken in QQQ. So we saw 100% of that gap and then some faded. In fact, from the highs to the lows so far, that's a 1.2% drop. If you look at the pop-up box on the left there down towards the bottom. Uh, so, so far, uh, we dropped as much as 1.2 percent off the highs that's that's pretty bearish price action and uh, I have to say I'd be very surprised um, to see us you know regain and get back above today's highs so I'll say this right now I'm still not putting QQQ as an official trade idea I've had a couple people in the trading room inquire hey Randy you know are you going to put any index shorts up as official trade ideas uh you know, the trend has been so darn resilient that my answer was when I see enough evidence, and I think that'll be soon, but I can tell you right now, if you, uh, depending on your style, uh, you could certainly short the cues with a stop above today's highs. Uh, I think that's very objective, and your downside is minimal. From where it is right now, you're talking a, a loss of 1%. So, uh, based on everything that I'm going over here in the charts, and I'll just touch on the FANG stocks real quick. Uh, here's that 60 minute I was posting recently. You know, it's simple. It's a series of divergent highs. You look for divergent highs, you get corrections. This is, you know, if you're a more active trader, you can live in this world of the 60 minute charts trade here. Uh, you had a divergent low. I was on vacation, the working vacation recently. I pointed that out and I didn't expect it to play out for this move, but it was pointed out and, and, and it did play out. So, um, however, we came full circle. Um, we had a rally. There was a price channel. We put in a divergent high there. Prices continued higher, put in a second divergent high. Uh, this was pointed out recently. And then boom, a big bearish engulfing candlestick. You can see it there on the 60 minute chart. And uh, prices fell back below the recent highs, the previous highs. Uh, so what you're looking at here, here's how I, you know, what I see on this chart. You know, these were the, the recent highs and cues. This was a breakout, proved to be a false breakout. It failed, and it failed impulsively. We moved back down below, 
And right now, this is what you need to watch. This has been the consolidation. We're, we're, we've attempted to get back above those highs on a few different occasions. You can see here these 60-minute sticks, and we failed. So uh, as of now, and each of these lines are support. You can see this was a consolidation zone back here. There was a reaction high there. Uh, there's a gap right there. Uh, so this is a key level. Any break below there, especially a solid break, a 60-minute close, uh, is bearish, and that's what I'm that's what I'm expecting. Uh, and again, it's not just because we're down today or we put in a bearish engulfing candlestick. It's everything. It's all of that. It's these negative divergences, as you see here. They they mark this top here. This was an extension of several different divergences, but one large divergent top. And that was a sharp sell-off, and the correction didn't end here. So had you shorted up here, uh, that was good for a move down. If I grab there, I grab the line. So I'm going to grab a little bit below there so I don't move that trend line. Uh, that was about a 5.5% drop. You know, if you trade, depending on what you trade, you know, NQ, E-minis, or even QQQ or SQQQ, some of the leverage ETFs, that's a decent trade. But more importantly, you can sniff out some of the more bearish stocks within the NASDAQ 100. And if the Qs drop 5.4%, uh, you're going to see a lot of stocks dropping twice that. Uh, now, speaking of the individual stocks, let's just look at those real quick and we'll wrap up here. Um, you guys know, at least in my book, there's uh, any analysis of QQQ is not complete without taking a look at the FANG, leading FANG stocks, F-A-A-M-G. Um, here's Apple. Apple had a you know big gap up, still up almost 5%, 4.71. You can see this gap. Uh, here's the thing. That gap is still, it's just an extension. It's another divergent high, just like the Qs just put in. Um, yeah, blowout quarter, fundamental story is just, you know, Apple's a juggernaut, blah, blah, blah. I've heard it all for years. Uh, let's take a look and I'll show you something. Uh, I've highlighted this, you know, several times on the site. Um, back in 2015, I'll tell you, it was April 28th. I remember the day clearly. Apple put in, uh, it reported earnings. And um, I believe it would have been after the close on the 27th. So the 28th was the, the top. This is a two-day period. So each of these are two-day candlesticks. I had to go, use that uh, to go back four years on this TC2000. So what we had here, uh, we had a, uh, a tremendous, a big gap up in the morning. And that gap was fully faded in then some, followed by a bearish engulfing candlestick, which was pointed out at the time, pointed out that day. We had additional follow-through. And that rosy earnings report and forward guidance and all that uh, ended up seeing the stock from that day drop uh, 30, almost 34%. So that's uh, not just a correction. That's a bear market and then some. And again, I'm pointing out the similarities. Does that have to happen because it happened before? No. Uh, however, if you're, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid, if, you know, if you turned on CNBC or any of the shows last night, you see they prayed out all the analysts that, uh, you know, are calling Apple's at 156. I'm sure they're calling for it to go to 200 or more. Um, but again, remember this. Stocks bottom on bad news. Uh you know, things are always darkest just before the dawn, and they also top on good news. It only makes sense. Um, so here's what I'm I'm on watch for. I wouldn't short Apple right now. You don't have any technical evidence. Um, I think a short on the Qs is objective. And uh, do I think that if the Qs drop, Apple continues higher? No, I think Apple will go down with it. Uh, the evidence isn't there yet. Look for uh, first things first. Let's maybe see uh, if, if it erases today's gains at some point in the next week or so. Uh, backfill that gap if it backfills that gap. But uh, again, I wanted to highlight here, uh, just take a look and let me draw this out if I can. I'll try this pen tool. Just look at the advance in Apple. Look at the similarities to this run and this run here. Okay, you have this very similar, almost identical in slope, these downtrend lines. This one was a little bit longer in duration, but the slope is nearly identical. You also had a high, then followed by uh, negative divergence with a marginal new high up there. You can see the divergence down below. Um, this In this point, we have a very steep divergence, even steeper divergence, two consecutive series of negative divergences. Uh, so it's all there. Um, 
and going back in that point in time, Apple traded, started, you know, it started a correction and again topped on April 28th, had a very bearish candle here, failed to make new highs. That left, that was an island top right there. You can see if you zoom in. Um, so these are things to look for. Now, uh, you know, I don't expect the charts to always be exactly the same. Uh, so one possibility here, let's go back to the daily time frame, um, is a potential for an island gap. Let's just say the market continues to sell down, the queues sell down. I'm going to go over the other fame stocks in a second here. Uh, what you might look for, several different things. A gap down tomorrow or any time in the next week or so, what has the potential to put an island uh, topping pattern in place, either an uh, island topping pattern um, or an island cluster. If you have a few different candles, let's say Apple trade sideways, puts in a few more candlesticks. Here, I'll draw it out for you and just imagine that's a candle. There's another candle. And then boom, we gap down. There's a candle. Uh, this is what you call an island cluster top. And that's one of many different things. Of course, any big red candle that erases today's candle and closes below it uh, would be bearish. Uh, pull back targets. If you're bullish Apple and you think it's going a lot higher, you can target these previous reaction highs. Uh, you can step in on a full gap backfill down here. Um, but if those levels are taken out, um, it just adds to the to the bearish case. But right now, you see we don't have, we have potential negative divergence. The PPO, because of today's big gap, is still pointed higher. So again, there's work to be done to firm up um, the, the bearish case in Apple. And uh, if that work is completed, you know, in the next week or two, next few weeks, then I still maintain these targets down here. And these drops, I'd have to redo these numbers. They were, I think, from over here. So it would be better than a 14 or 18% correction right now. But enough time spent on Apple. Again, I, I, you can't touch it here. You can take a, a you know, speculative shot in the dark, but there's no zero supporting evidence to uh, really short Apple at this point in time as far as the charts go. All right, let's just look at a few others. Let's look at what happened to the fame stock since reporting. Here's Alphabet. Um, this is a GOOG Class A, GOOGL, I'm sorry, Class A shares. Uh, failed to make a new high. They made a roughly equal high, so you're talking about maybe a potential double top. But look what's happened since earnings. Uh, everything's being faded. These A lot of these stocks popped on earnings, yeah, tremendous earnings. And so what you're seeing is a change of character in the market. When stocks no longer go up on good news, um, that's a change of character. Uh, when you see stocks rising on good news or bad news, that's a strong market. And that's what we've had over the last couple of years. But uh, as of now, I'm seeing a lot of these gains faded in the stocks that have already reported. Most of our leading you know, FANG stocks have reported. Uh, here's Microsoft. This was a line I had in place for a long time. It connects several points. It, it marks large divergence. If you really go out longer in time, you can, uh, I don't have it here on that chart. There it is. You can see that powerful negative divergence building and that divergence is steepening here so um, there's a common theme these stocks are, are selling off on you know blowout earnings and guidance and um, a lot of them are rolling over and have given back any of the post earning gains and then some here's Facebook as we know Facebook had a you know big blowout numbers. There's the earnings candle right there, big green candle. As of now, uh, pointed out earlier in the trading room that the gap was almost faded out. As of now, all the post gap rally, what I'm talking about is from where that the bottom of that candlestick, we gapped up. So now we've entered the gap. Gaps once entered are often backfilled. So that would say now, uh, if you're a, you know, long Facebook or bullish Facebook, um, very least you have to expect a little more downside and a backfill of that gap. The odds favor that right now. So, uh, and if that gap doesn't hold the bottom of the gap, that's pretty bearish. That would be a break of support. The bottom of that gap should act as support. Here's a minor uptrend line to look at. And again, the picture on Facebook, if you look at these lines, that looks like a big ascending broadening wedge pattern, a little bit narrow and long, but uh, either way, here's an uptrend line to watch. So you have this minor trend line, you have that gap support. We break down below there and Facebook is heading lower. And I can almost assure you if Facebook makes that move down, uh, the cues are coming down with it. And this was a target I've had here for a while. I still think it'll be hit. Um, you know, I put in question mark, what percent drop? Well, from the highs, let's say the highs are in uh, for now. 
And again, this doesn't have to be the end of the great bull market. Anything's possible. But if that target's hit, you're talking about an 18% drop in Facebook. So um, that'd be a pretty healthy drop in the queues. Here's Amazon. A lot on this chart, but just focus on two things here. Focus on these blue lines. They, they, they show prices working their way up within a large, very large rising wedge. And if you go to a weekly chart, this will look more proportionate to, you know, a big powerful wedge on the weekly. Uh, what I've done here, you took the, I took the widest point of the wedge with this purple line right there. And I've added that to, uh, you know, recently to where I thought Amazon would break down and it has broken down. So here, let me get this out of the way. You can see this candle as of today, we're trading below there. Barring a stick save into the close today, uh, this stock has just broke a very well-defined uptrend line. I mean, numerous reactions, perfect reactions right off that trend line. So, you know, on a scale to 1 to 10, that's close to a 10 as far as validity for a trend line, in my opinion. And there's a measured target of the wedge. Um, you know, I find it more than mere coincidence that when I take measured price projections for uh, stocks, that they line up very well with key levels. What am I talking about here? Well, you can see my lines. Those lines are not arbitrary. They've been on there for a long time. There's a big gap back here, a very significant gap, and quite a bit of reactions. Reactions are where uh, on that bottom or upper line, we had a gap right here. We had a reaction from below there. So this is what I call a um, uh, support zone. It's gap support plus numerous reactions in price. And uh, it just so happens that that measured target for that wedge uh, projects right to that level, which is about 660. Uh, what would that mean if, if Amazon dropped that much? Uh, talking about a 33% drop. Do I think it happens, gets goes straight there? Of course not. Uh, that's why I have all these other lines along the way. These are all support levels in which you know a reaction is likely. So it might work its way, you know, over the next, who knows, six, eight months or more uh, down to that level if it gets there. And ultimately, that would be a, uh, that's where I'd be interested to buy Amazon if it got there. And at the time, the charts confirmed, meaning bullish divergence, other uh, key stocks, as well as the index coming to support. Um, but until then, you know, the primary trend is still up. So let's see a few more breakdowns here. There's Amazon. Let's see some impulsive follow through. Uh, you have to see Apple die as well. Right now it looks healthy. Um, you know, this stock is, you know, Alphabet's rolling over, but there's still this trend line support. So these are the levels. This will really strengthen the case when you see all of these stocks, all five of these FANG stocks break some of these key uptrend lines. Uh, right now, they're just giving up uh, uh, some of the, the, the post earnings gains, that's all. But there's still, as you can see, these trend line support levels below. So there's work to be done, in other words, to firm up that longer term bearish case. But uh, I can tell you, it's all still priced in the chart. Divergent highs, you can see the RSI on Facebook. Um, let's wrap it up here. That's uh, my analysis on QQQ. There's plenty of um, bullish uh, ideas out there right now. The commodities are doing great. Um, and there's also some, you know, shorting ops like I've covered recently in the, um, you know, the transportation sector. Oh, yeah, I'd be remiss not to bring that up again. Uh, transport ports continue to fall. Uh, I have a chart. It's on another program I can show you. You can do this as well. Overlay IYT or the there's also the S&P also has their own transportation index. You can lay that one over the S&P 500. And in nearly every case where we've had a large drop in the market, um, the transportation's turned down first. And you can see that clear divergence. Now, this divergence is only fairly recent. Uh, going back in times, again, I don't have that chart up in front of me, but um, those divergences can last sometimes for months. Um, but this is certainly a red flag right now. The fact that the transportations aren't just not making new highs with the market, they're moving down impulsively and it's priced into the charts. Uh, I see more downside to come. I've covered those extensively in videos, the airlines, the, the, uh, the railroads and, uh, IYT itself. All right, let's wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with right side of the chart. Hope you enjoyed it.